up to this point, we've pretty much all just looked at our Facebook ads. How can we change the Facebook ads and get more out of Facebook ads? Now we need to step back, look at it in a wider lens and see how can we get more out of the funnel as a whole. What's up everybody, Alvaro here from Alvaro Barrios Digital and here we are, we have made it. This is the final part, part four of my video series in how to run Facebook ads in 2022. If you have yet to check out parts one, two or three, definitely go and check them out. In part one, I go over the three pillars you need to focus on in order to find success in 2022. And then in part two, I do a deep dive in that first pillar, which is getting more data and being able to make better decisions off of that data and then in part three i do a deep dive into the second pillar which is how to create superior messaging and then in this final video right here we are doing a deep dive in the final pillar which is how to get more out of the traffic you're already getting but like i said if you have missed any of those first few videos i will link them down in the description below so be sure to check them out so here we are. What is the last phase in order to get success with Facebook ads in 2022? It's getting more out of the traffic you're already getting. So like I mentioned in my first video, gone are the days where you can simply fix your funnel by making adjustments to your Facebook ads. It used to be the case, right? If you just wanted more leads or more purchases, you would just spend more, or you just want bigger launches, you would just spend more. Or if your conversions exactly weren't where you want them to be, maybe you would switch up the ads, switch up your audience, whatever it might be. Now, all of that obviously is still part of the game. None of that is going away, but my ultimate point here is that you have to look at your entire funnel much, much more holistically. So up to this point, we've pretty much all just looked at our Facebook ads. How can we change the Facebook ads and get more out of Facebook ads? Now we need to step back look at it in a wider lens and see how can we get more out of the funnel as a whole. And the reason for that is because Facebook ads are not going to get easier and they're not going to get cheaper. That is just the reality that we are living in. So if your only focus is on the Facebook Facebook ad side of things, then you're in for some painful results, right? So what exactly do I mean by looking at your funnel more holistically? What I mean by that is what happens after the click. So once someone actually clicks on your Facebook ad, how can you improve everything that comes after that? So that comes in the form of a couple of different variables. One, your conversion rates on your landing page or your sales page, your email open rates, how many people are actually even making it to your page based upon the people who are are clicking on your ad and then ultimately if you're doing launches like many of my clients do for their programs how can you get more out of the people in your launch so let's break down each and every single one of those a little bit more granularly that way you have a good understanding of how to move forward so step number one is conversion rate optimization or crow for short so in 2022 you really have to be crow obsessed and whatever tool you're using I can pretty much guarantee that it has has some sort of split testing feature. So you have to be split testing happy in 2022 in order to increase your conversion rate. So if your current conversion rate is sitting at 20%, what can you do to bump it up to 22% and then 24%, 28% and even get up to 30% and beyond, right? Every incremental increase in the percentage points, while the one single increment may not make a big difference overall in the long run over the course of an entire year, it actually will make a very big difference. You really want Want to focus on getting more out of the traffic that's already visiting your page. So if you have not been diligent about split testing thus far, you need to put together a plan moving forward. That way you can incrementally improve your conversion rate throughout the entire year. So obviously split testing is going to be a little different from platform to platform, but it's also pretty much the same from platform to platform. So I'm going to do a brief overview on how to do split testing with the online tool that I use, the lightning page or the I use, but it's going to be likely a little bit different for yours, but you'll still get a good idea of what split testing is if this is something that is brand new to you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so here we are inside of my landing page tool. So like I said, even though this is going to be specific to this tool, which you may not have, the whole general process is going to be similar across all the platforms. So it'll give you a good general idea of split testing, regardless of what platform you are using. So here specifically in this platform called Convertry, right here I have just a sample landing page. So if I want to start a split test here, what I do is that I come to these three dots and I click on start split test and then I click okay. 
And then it's going to give me the split test homepage, so to speak, where I have variant A, and then I can clone variant A, or even just create a new page entirely. And then once my test actually starts running, then it'll allow me to switch the split between them, right? So the default is a 50-50 split between variant A and variant B. But for example, if I wanna make it 70-30 in favor of variant A, then I can totally go ahead and do that as well. So to start off, what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna do a clone variant A. So that gives me my variant B at this moment in time. It's exactly the same, which I don't want, right? I do want some differences. So I'm going to go to edit variant. And then I can come in here and change the headline or maybe the images down here or anything like that. I'm going to keep this real simple. I would probably make a split test that's a little bit more different than what I'm about to show you. But again, I'm just doing it a very simple right now for purposes of this demonstration. And so I'm going to change this headline to get in front of your peeps. Right, so there I'm comparing headlines. Like I said, normally I probably wouldn't do something so simple like that, but uh, it is one option that you can do. So then I can go ahead and click on save. And I'm going to exit out of this back to the funnel and then I can go ahead and publish these. I'm not going to publish them right now simply because this is just a sample. But like I said, down here, I can change the split, right? So if I want to change it 70% to variant A or 30% to variant B, and I can go in the other direction. Likewise, typically I keep most tests at 50%. The only time really where you may want to favor one variant over another is that if you already have a very high converting landing page and you're just trying to see if maybe you can increase it by another or one or two percentage points, but you don't want to throw it off too much, then in that case, you may want to favor the already high converting variant, such as a 70-30 or 80-20 split. But like I said, that's totally up to you. And then I'm going to see the data over time. And then once that actually happens, I can click on declare winner on whichever variant I actually want to run permanently. And then that's going to be the version of the page that people will see moving forward. So as you can see here, it's very simple, very easy. And it's this easy on pretty much every single platform. No coding needed. You literally just press a couple different buttons and then it does all the work for you. So if this is something that you've not been doing a lot of, definitely make it a big focus in 2022 because I'm telling you the, the compound benefits of increasing your conversion rates, even just by five percentage points in the long run, it's going to make a massive difference over a 12 month period. All right, so like I said, that was just a very basic and high level overview. I didn't wanna to go too deep simply because not everyone's going to be using the same tool that I am, but you know, it's going to be still very similar with whatever platform you're using, Kajabi, ClickFunnels, Instapage, lead pages, right? They all have very similar capabilities. So just make sure that you figure out what are the exact buttons and levers you need to press. That way you can be well on your way to creating some awesome split tests in your business. And before we move on to the next point, if you are enjoying this video so far do me a huge favor and hit that like button and let me know if you are enjoying this type of content that way i can create more of it in the future and it also just really helps support the channel so i really do appreciate it okay cool so the next step is okay they've opted in either free opt-in or a purchase what happens after that well 99 percent of all cases right then they join your email list and they go through some sort of email nurturing sequence what can you do to improve that part right in this day and age a good email open rate is considered to be somewhere between 20% and 30%, but still that can be improved, right? You don't want to just be in the average. How can you be above average? So if you've never taken a long, hard look at your email open rates and your email click through rates, 2022 is the year to start doing so. Cause again, it's not going to get easier in the Facebook ad side. So you just need to extract more out of what you're already getting. So if your email open rates are sitting at 20%, what can you do to increase them to 25% or 30% and then even go above that level to 35 and 40%. So I do know some businesses that consistently get 50% email open rates from their list. And that's because they put a lot of time and effort into creating and crafting amazing email sequences. So for example, we think about hiring agencies all the time. And typically when you hear that phrase, it's about a Facebook ads agency or maybe a Google ads agency or YouTube ads agency. And that's all still fine. But guess what? There are email marketing agencies. And if you've never considered hiring an email marketing agency, maybe right now is the year to do it. Because at the end of the day, 
email marketing, it's a very challenging field because obviously we're all inundated with so many emails, but if a marketing agency, an email marketing agency specifically in this case, has a proven track record of getting better results for their clients out of their emails, you should definitely, definitely consider hiring them. All right, after that, we want to look at actually getting more people to see our offer. So what I mean by that is comparing your link clicks to your landing page views. So most people do not skip this over, but as a matter of fact, I did an entire video on this and I call it the silent killer. I will also link that down for you in the description below. But basically just to give a quick summary right here, if you get a hundred link clicks on your ads, it does not mean in any way, shape or form that you get a hundred people who are checking out your offer. As a matter of fact, <laughs> you're probably going to be very shocked at how few people are making it to your landing page to see your offer from the amount of people clicking on your ad. So in most cases, I'm seeing somewhere between, you know, maybe 60 and 70%, sometimes even as low as 50%. Meaning if 100 people click on your ad, 50 actually see the offer, 60 at best, maybe 70 people actually see the offer. So think about all that money that you're spending on link clicks that never actually make it to your page in the first place. So what's going on here? Why are 100 people clicking, but only 60 or 65 are actually making it? And this all comes down to the fact that unfortunately, the vast majority of landing page tools out there are simply slow loading. There's there's no way around that. There's nothing you can do to fix it. Even if you minimize your images and put very basic landing pages together, they're still going to be slow loading because it's just how those tools are built. So what is someone to do in this scenario? Well, I would highly recommend for you to take a look at the tool we saw earlier for the split test called Convertry. This is a tool that I just started using a couple of months ago. And I have to tell you, it is one of my favorite marketing tools I have used in a very, very long time because yes, they are just another landing page builder tool like the dozens that there are already out there. But the difference between Convertry and all the others, be it ClickFunnels, Kajabi, lead pages, doesn't matter. The difference is Convertry focuses on fast loading pages, very fast loading pages. And I have worked with clients on all the platforms and I can tell you that bar none, Convertry has the fastest loading pages out there. And we have already recreated many of our clients pages inside of Convertry and doing a side by side test. The speed is significantly better with the Convertry version, which means we're getting more people even making it to the page in the first place. And so without making any changes in the rest of the funnel, just by getting more people to even see the offer, we're already getting better results. So that's a very, very simple solution right there to get that quick win before maybe you start looking at some of the other options in your funnel to improve. So if you are interested in checking out Convertry, I will link it down in the description below. Now, just total disclosure, it is an affiliate link, which means if you do end up purchasing Convertry, I do get a small little commission. It does not change the price for you in any way, shape or form. As a matter of fact, all it is, it's a way for you to continue to support this channel. So I will link that down below. If you use it, I greatly appreciate it. Okay, and then in the last phase, if you are someone who does launches like the vast majority of my clients do, whether it's a launch for some sort of online coaching program or an online course or an online membership, you need to look at your launches and see how you can get more out of the people already coming in. So if you're used to getting thousand people into your launches, well, if you want to get more than that, it's probably going to be very expensive, right? If you're not looking at your entire funnel holistically, as I'm emphasizing right here. So let's stay on that number of a thousand people. And let's say from a thousand people, you can get a hundred people to purchase. Well, how can you increase that to 105 and then 110, 115, so on and so forth with the same amount of people get more purchases. So this can come in a couple of different formats. One, it still includes everything that we've been talking about, improving your conversion rates on your landing page, getting more people to actually even make it to your page in the first place with fast loading pages and also getting better performance out of your email. But you also want to look at what happens happens in that time period from when someone opts into your launch to when they actually join your launch, right? So whether it's a webinar launch or a challenge launch, you know, any of those modalities, there's always this 
period, so to speak, we can call it like an awkward silence period where people opt in and then they have to wait, you know, seven days, eight days, maybe sometimes even 10 days for the actual launch to even start. And yes, you're typically sending them emails to keep them warm and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, what can you do? How can you keep them excited from that moment that they opt in all the way until when the launch starts? And a lot of this has to do with how you keep the momentum going. And you can do this in a couple of different ways. One, if you haven't utilized Facebook, groups for your launches in the past, I definitely encourage you to do so. It's a great way for people to interact with you on a daily basis while they wait for the actual launch to start. It's a very personalized experience. They get direct access to you, the experts, and they feel like they're getting VIP treatment. So definitely consider using Facebook groups in your launches moving forward. And also you want to be building your authority in that time period from when they opt in to when they actually start the launch. Meaning the vast majority of people entering your launch are going to be people who have never heard of you, no idea who you are, what you have to offer, what you stand for, all that kind of good stuff. And so it's very challenging to get someone like that to sign up for your launch and then maybe purchase a $1,000 or $2,000 program in the course of seven days when they previously had never even heard of you before. So what you want to do in order to build up that no like, and trust factor is to build up your authority. So if you have been featured on third party websites, such as, you know, Inc.com, I've had some clients featured on there. I've had some clients featured on Forbes, or if you've been interviewed on industry podcasts that people would recognize, run ads to those resources, to those third party resources. And it is important for them to be third party simply because yes, you can run ads to your own content all day long, but it won't build that much authority because it's just you talking about you. But if you're being featured somewhere else out there that they recognize and also respect, then instantly without them even doing that big of a deep dive uh, into you, your authority is going to go up in their eyes because they're going to be like, wow, this person was interviewed on this podcast. I listened to that podcast or they've been featured on Forbes. That's really cool. They clearly must know what they are talking about. So those are two great ways to get more out of the people who are already entering the launch. So those are the areas you want to be focusing on. Definitely look at your funnel much more holistically in 2022. Don't just look at your Facebook ads alone. Facebook ads are just one piece of the puzzle. See what you can do to improve every single phase. And I, I can assure you, if you do that, you will find better success this year than you have in the past few years, even though ads are a lot more challenging than they used to be. So I hope you found this whole series to be useful. Again, if you've missed any of them, they're all down in the description below so you can easily check them out. I appreciate you tuning in and definitely stick around because I have a lot of great content coming for you in the rest of the year. So I will see you in the next video. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, do me a huge favor and hit that like button. It really helps push this video out to the YouTube algorithm. That way more people just like you can watch this information and benefit from it just like you have. And if you have any other topics you'd like for me to cover, definitely just let me know in the comments below. The most popular and requested topics I get, I turn into videos just like this one. And if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications. That way you don't miss any valuable content that I put out on a weekly basis. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it.